Well, honestly, one of my favorite memories of a library was uh, I used to work in one. I used to work in the University of Denver's library. And, uh, and the best thing about working in a university library is the undergraduates never check out any books. Um, and so I, when I was doing research to write my novels, it meant that I could go into the stacks and, and I could check out entire sections. And so everything about Shanghai in the 1920s, I could check it all out and take it home and I could read all these books that I could never have had access to any other way. And uh, that informed my writing, it informed my understanding of the world around me, and uh, you know, it's too bad the undergrads didn't know what they were missing. But, uh, but that actually is one of the things that I, I remember most clearly about libraries was having that access to vast amounts of information and having access to it um, without having to buy it. I mean, we, we have a public library in my very small town, um, and, and either through interlibrary loan or through the books that are already on the shelves, it means that my son has access to books, it means that students, my wife's students, my wife is a teacher, and her students had access to books, huge numbers of books, and, and we aren't rich there. And, and so to say that each one of these students should buy, say, for example, a copy of my book, which would be fabulous because it would make me so rich and famous. But in reality, um, uh, I want to see my books on shelves because I want them to have access to those ideas. And uh, one of the things that I think is really important about uh, us living in a democracy is we need informed people. And we need informed people regardless of their, uh, their um, economic status. And so one of the things that I really, really value about libraries is I feel like they are a, a core part of the democratization process and of making uh, us a better society. Um, now it is a resource for me and my family. And yeah, I can take my son there and he can go through all of these different books and he pulls out all these different books. He's a drawer, um, he really likes to draw. And so he'll pull out all these picture books and with the different styles that he likes. And he's exposed to all of these different wonderful styles and he can sort of select those things. Um, I honestly, I feel like we're hitting a decision point for ourselves as a society um, where we're deciding what we value and what we don't value in our world. And we're perfectly happy to spend a great deal of money uh, bombing places we never even knew the names of. Um, but uh, we aren't so interested in uh, spending the relatively small amount of money it takes to actually maintain and educate our citizenry. And I'm a science fiction writer. What I do is I extrapolate. Um, and so when I look at data points like that, when I see us deciding not to fund our education, not to fund our libraries, to say that, oh, if you're going to have access to information, you have to pay for it, you have to be wealthy, um, what that looks like to me is the beginning of an oligarchy. Um, and where not only wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few, but also information is concentrated in the hands of a few. And that doesn't look like a good road for a democracy to go down. The thing that most concerns me about people trying to ban books is that uh, that assumption that, uh, that what I know best for you over here is, is the beginning of a cascade of, of events and a kind of a group think that I don't think uh, is, is uh, a good thing in any society. Um, uh, I, the societies that I'm familiar with, I, I used to uh, uh, spend a lot of time over in China, um, and they control a lot of information over there. And uh, there's, uh, they control what gets blogged about, they control what gets published, they control all sorts of things. And, and what it means is that, that the public discussion and the public debate is always askew. It's not uh, reflective of uh, the realities around us, all the holistic uh, set of realities. And when a group of people decide that this is the only piece of reality that you get to connect to, this is the only piece of information you get to connect to, um, we don't want to talk about kids who are gay, we don't want to talk about sex in books, we don't want to talk about uh, we don't want to talk about global warming, whatever those things are. You can choose any number of things. Um, uh, we don't like this book because we call it racist. Whatever those things are, um, you know, it, I feel like we as a, a people are better off being able to see and touch all of the, the world rather than pretending as though part of it doesn't exist. And that's, I think, the thing that I think is really of most concern about banning books is that idea that we shouldn't look at the world. Uh, my latest project is actually called The Drowned Cities. Um, it's a follow-up book to Shipbreaker. It's all about children who are growing up in a, uh, an area uh, torn by perpetual war. 
um, and and it's uh, broadly the thing that was interesting to me about it was the idea of thinking about what happens when politics becomes so divisive and so destructive that that we vilify one another and destroy one another. So.